everything you need to know about the Titan tragedy. Bright, driven, and born to riches, Mr. Stockton Rush was quite a man. But unlike most of us who seem to enjoy life on Earth, this man only had one dream, to live on Mars, Earth's fascinating but unlivable sister planet. Realizing this Martian landing was not happening in his lifetime, Mr. Rush quickly looked the other way, turning his attention to the sea. In 2019, Rush set up a unique travel company called OceanGate giving the uber-rich a chance to explore the deep sea, including, of course, the most famous shipwreck of all time. So, on June 16th, a fine Sunday morning, Rush and his bevy of four mission specialists, including a young teenage boy, were probably feeling the most psyched up they'd ever been. And for good reason. Heading into the Atlantic, Titan's mothership, the Canadian-flagged Polar Prince, left the shores of Newfoundland with a total of 41 people on board, including 17 crew members, it seemed all was going to plan. Carrying limited oxygen supplies, you're probably wondering, are all submersibles like the Titan doomed to die? Well, not really. Remember, this wasn't the first time the Titan landed on the ocean bed to explore the century-old shipwreck. Crafted using the highest quality titanium and filament-wound carbon fiber, according to the company, the Titan had successfully completed 50 test dives in the Bahamas before the real journey, proving it could bear the ginormous pressures of deep ocean. In other words, the Washington-based company knew the drill. Having arranged and manned expeditions, Rush was a man who wanted to rule over the seas. In fact, did you know a single trip on the Titan submersible cost $250,000 to each person on board? Now imagine being the same rich billionaire trapped at the bottom of the sea. All the money in the world, but no way to get back on land. But hey, before we tell you exactly what happened, let's find out what we know so far. We know that the famous remains of the Titanic lie about 4,000 meters into the icy waters of the Atlantic. We also know this journey took about 2.5 hours for the Titan to complete. Sadly, only one hour and 45 minutes into the descending journey, all contact with the mothership was lost, prompting a five-day international search that left the whole world in shock. With survival rates falling by the minute, the international media was caught in a frenzy until the U.S. Coast Guard finally found debris near the wreckage site, confirming all five on board were dead and what is now being described as a catastrophic implosion. You're probably wondering what an implosion even is. Well, pretty much the exact opposite of an explosion. An implosion is when something collapses in on itself in just a matter of milliseconds. Remember, pressure levels underwater are infinitely higher than land. Okay, let me clarify. So, if you're standing at sea level, air pressure is about 100 kilopascals, but once you go deeper underwater, pressure keeps on building and building. Mind you, pressure at the exact site of the Titanic wreck was roughly more than 41,000 kilopascals, which means even the tiniest crack or flaw could lead to the most vile of outcomes, making death almost instant for all those on board. In the case of the Titan tragedy, you are literally talking less than a millisecond, maybe even a nanosecond. And while this loss of life is tragic, the fact that the collapse of the Titan was so wildly abrupt also means passengers on board were probably dead even before they had time to think that something was wrong. Crazy, right? Remember, no matter how small, for a human brain to process any form of physical pain, it needs time. Time that these five passengers on board didn't have. So what about their bodies? Sadly, in an implosion like that, there are no bones or bodies left intact. But do you know the dodgiest part of the Titan story? According to several media sources, the US Navy knew that the sub was gone on Monday, but delayed news for three days before finally announcing the sub was no more, leading the rest of the international community to grapple with questions like, who was responsible for this horrible accident? The company, the governments, or international sea bodies? It's hard to say, because here's the thing, once you are 12 miles off the shore and past the outer limit of the territorial sea, there's no global boat police out there to rescue you on a quick press of a dial. 
And knowing each member of this small sea craft had legally signed on to the risks, it's hard not to blame anyone else. Amid more recent reports of OceanGate firing one of its employees for raising concerns about the vessel's safety, we are left wondering, what is the cost we're ready to pay? And what does this mean for our future? Should high seas be open to exploration by adventure seekers like Stockton Rush? Or should international bodies like the UN have stronger laws in place? Well, if there's one thing history teaches us, even the worst human tragedies come with a silver lining. Remember, when the Titanic sank and 1,500 lives were lost, it resulted in major changes in international maritime policy. Today, a century on, should we expect the same in the aftermath of the Titan episode? I mean, for one, the recent implosion will trigger increased regulation of the high seas when it comes to submersibles. What about you? What do you think? Should deep sea dives be banned in the future? Or should old grave sites like the Titanic be left alone? Let us know in the comment below.